Hello, I'm Daniela. I'm Ted. <laughs> um, and I'm the product manager for Dryad, and I work at California Digital Library. And I work at Metadata Game Changes. And Ted's put in here the roar for CDL and no roar for Metadata Game Changes. Well, we have a DUNS number. It's a traditional <laughs> identifier that we're trying to work into the roar. So. <laughs> So what we're going to talk about is that we have this problem. So Dryad has 27,000 data publications. Um, and because of different standards and um, when we were thinking about publishing articles and data and not having a standard for institutions, we never actually collected the institutional affiliations for any of the authors for these data publications. And that's a huge missing thing that we're looking for. And what, what makes that a problem? Well, a lot of institutions want to know research output from their institution. We want to know the usage by researchers in their institution. We want to be able to see what's coming in to a central place like Dryad and then send it back out to an institution. And really right now, we just don't have any standard way to find that. And we're also just don't even have that raw information to start with. So, I think it's both of us. So we came together <laughs> and talked about how are we going to find all this information for these Dryad data publications. And we know that in the past, Dryad has only required that data be related to an article. And we know that journals send that information to Crossref. Um, and that was the first place that we were going to start looking for this. But when we started, we found that we could only find half of all the affiliations in Crossref. And that's because there isn't a standard thus far, far for institutions to be sending that information. Um, and so we also had to start looking at places like PLOS that have open APIs that allow for us to start pulling this information. Bring on Ted. So we got the affiliations out of either Crossref or PLOS. We also have a, a, a small army of curators that are manually generating some, which is, of course, uh, hard and, and uh, much appreciated work, and it goes into the meat grinder, and out of that comes a token, and the token goes into Roar to try and uh, convert the token into an identifier, and the goal in the end is to get those identifiers into the data site metadata for, this, for these data sets. And uh, what I'm going to focus on today is really this part, taking the affiliation data from Crossref and PLOS and trying to generate Roars. Who here knows what a ROAR is? Oh, ROARs. ROARs are Research Organization Registry. They're a new uh, open uh, identifier. Maria Gould gave a talk on it earlier today. She's back here if you have questions. <clears throat> um, so this is what a perfect affiliation string looks like. People that are teaching um, people, scientists, how to do things effectively with their publication should work on writing simple affiliation strings that we can we can extract things like uh, names of universities from. This is a good one because it has consistent telemeters. This is semicolons in this case. And there's a single affiliation that happens to be uh, delimited by those delimiters. So we can obviously recognize that pretty easily and turn it into a roar. So this is a very simple project. Uh, unfortunately, the world looks a little bit more like this. Uh, there's a lot we have. Uh, you know, some number of tens of thousands of these strings that we're trying to work with. And, and here we're at, we're at CSV, and that's really wonderful if there are uh, commas separating the tokens that you're interested in. And you can see some of these have commas, but some of them have semicolons. So there's multiple delimiters, and, and we need to try and work, work with multiple delimiters. And then, of course, there's some strings that don't have any delimiters that you're trying to find these tokens in. So uh, my approach to that is uh, to identify or to create some targets, which are strings that are expected in organization names. And these are things that, that you find by looking at the data or doing word counts or just becoming familiar with it. And these become the targets that we're looking for to try to uh, identify the, the names of organizations in these strings. <clears throat> and so it looks like this. This is a uni the most common uh, word in names of organizations, research organizations, happens to be university. Uh, it happens in many languages, so we use UNIV, which works in, in uh, most languages. Uh, things like national is also uh, useful in a lot of situations, and a lot of these tokens are things like department. 
One of the things about that we know about organizational organizations, they're hierarchical. So there are usually a department of X, university of Y. Uh, Roar is currently focusing on the university level, <clears throat> but I want to try and build this tool so that we can do it um, at different levels of hierarchy at some point if that becomes necessary. So department can be important, but there are also strings where department is actually the identifier for the organization that you're looking for. So if it's Department of Agriculture or Department of Interior or uh, other things like that, you want to be able to find those tokens that start with uh, department as well that are going to be at the right level in the hierarchy for ROAR. <clears throat> so, this is uh, just a selection of UNIV things, and we already know that the University of Arizona is a perfect uh, token in this case, a perfect organizational name. There are other uh, challenges in this, in this data set, things like names of universities or other organizations in uh, non-English languages, which unfortunately is a challenge for me if it's not English or German. Um, a lot of funny characters sort of uh, that, that are in these strings, and uh, cause some challenges, and then also strings, as I mentioned before, that are delimited by other things. So in this case, they're delimited by uh, commas, and obviously that's a simple problem, but it's just one of the kinds of, so, so simple problems that add up when you're trying to munge a fair amount of text. <clears throat> so this just uh, shows a, a set of replacements that are made in the process of converting the, the original affiliation strings into these tokens, a lot of replacements for uh, univ dot. Another good thing when you're writing these strings, if you're writing them into your uh, publication platforms, is try to avoid abbreviations. Uh, that's sort of a good thing in most many uh, data processing tasks. So this is a lot of univ um, abbreviations. <clears throat> so. This is that original input that we looked at, and these are the, the tokens that were identified uh, using looking for these, for these targets. And um, now we have other challenges, which is uh, one is that we have affiliation strings with multiple targets. So this one at the top is a, a, a laboratory in China. Um, it comes from the China Agricultural University, which is the token that we're looking for here. And the rest of these um, are things that we need to try and avoid. Or they might be candidate, they would be can called candidate tokens, but the, in, the, in the first string we just want one. Um, in the second string uh, we've got a few different things. We've got Cavendish Laboratory, which sounds like it could be at a roar, the appropriate level for roars. Uh, we've got Imperial College London, and of course College is one of our targets. <clears throat> but notice in this second string, and the way that I highlighted this makes it a little dif difficult to see, but there's actually affiliations for four authors here, and the affiliation for two, three, and four have two, three, and four written in front of them. Um, but so this is a situation that occurs in, in a lot of in a lot of these examples, and people also write extraneous text like from the Department of, Sci of Zoology or you know, just extraneous labels. They're writing those labels because they understand that labeling things is good and it's generally a good practice, but unfortunately when you're trying to process a bunch of these things, those labels can become difficult. Um, we're back to our data set. Uh, so now we've got a bunch of uh, affiliations like we recognized back here, and now the question is how can we convert those to ROARs? So uh, ROAR.org ROR.org has a nice uh, API for giving it a string or giving it other kinds of identifiers, which is going to turn out to be pretty uh, important. Giving it a string and uh, getting search results. So, uh, and there's also a, a first pass at a reconciler for ROAR that is uh, uh, compliant with OpenRefine. So it's another approach that you have. So in many of those, uh, affiliation tokens that we talked about, they, they make an, an exact match. So you can go against the, the ROAR API with a thing like um, the University of Arizona, and you get something back that's called the University of Organization, and you get the ROARs. In a lot of cases, because of these differences in delimiters or these things that are piled together, those matches are not quite so easy. Or it could be that some of those funny characters are at different places in the words. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a systematic uh, replacement in that case. 
And those things, of course, came from Crossref or PLOS, so, so we want to keep them. Those are the, the strings we're searching for. <clears throat> um, so in other cases, you need to look at these uh, affiliation tokens by, uh, with a human brain, uh, at least in this first pass, and try and say, this, this is not an exact match, but it is a valid match. So we have two kinds of matches, either exact or valid, and that gives us, uh, you know, looking at this, this, about this many exacts and about this many exacts or valids. So um, the results so far, uh, in a sample of the Crossref uh, metadata, we've got 8,826 DOIs. And of course, those DOIs are publications. They have multiple authors, and some authors have multiple affiliations. So the number of affiliations uh, expands. Uh, the number of affiliation tokens gets a little smaller in this case, which is good. We have 11,000 of those, and we're matching those up with 2,500 ROARs. <clears throat> so in this case, of the DOIs, we have 71% uh, of them that we're able to assign ROARs to, and 65% of the authors that we actually have ROARs. And, and those numbers grow in two ways. We increase the number of ROARs that we know, or we go through and, and look at the data and, and try and match things up uh, at this point by hand and by improving the algorithms that we're using. Uh, in the PLOS case, we started with a smaller data set of 2,496 2400, DOIs, roughly uh, you know, 7,500, 8,600 affiliations and tokens, and 1,592 ROARs. So in that case, we actually have ROARs for 91% uh, of the DOIs and 75% uh, of the authors. I hoping, I'm hoping that these numbers can improve. Um, of course, there are a lot of affiliation strings. There are, there are some organizations that don't have ROARs, uh, not very many of those, but there's a lot of affiliation strings that don't actually include names of organizations. There are addresses or random words. <laughs> You know, there are some affiliation strings that are department. Um, and uh, so we, I, I don't think we'll get to 100%, but I'm hoping that we can get, uh, like in the PLOS case, at least over 90% of the, of the uh, affiliations or the DOIs with ROARs. And of course, this will improve as a function of time. So future directions, what, what this project is really about is about the adoption of a of unambiguous identifiers in metadata uh, systems and metadata repositories. We know that we have a lot of metadata repositories in the case of, of uh, the Dryad one, that was one that didn't have information that we needed. And we also have repositories that have affiliation information or they have human names, but they don't have identifiers for those affiliations and they don't have things like ORCIDs for those IDs. How many people here know about Crossref? So Crossref, I'll we'll talk about it in a minute. It's got 110 million uh, DOIs. <clears throat> How many of you here know about uh, ORCIDs? How many have ORCIDs? Okay, well it turns out that only 9% of the records that are in Crossref actually have ORCIDs. Okay, so there's a lot of, lot of room for getting identifiers in there. Something like 13% of the records that are in Crossref have affiliations. So we're trying, going to try and get, get this um, attached a system to uh, Crossref and also to Datasite for inserting these, these, getting these identifiers in there so that we have a, a, uh, enough in there that we can demonstrate the benefits. There's a lot of great talks today about helping people understand the benefits of various aspects of open science. <clears throat> and helping people understand the benefits of unique and persistent identifiers for people, organizations, publications, instruments, algorithms, locations, etc. Helping people understand that requires having, having some uh, critical mass that you can demonstrate the benefits. So that's really what we're trying to start out with here. Uh, many people here are in our Familiar with Open Refine? Uh, we, we, there was a talk earlier about the, the Carpentries, a great talk by Kerry, uh, mentioned uh, Open Refine. Um, it's a useful tool. It's got a, a user interface is sort of challenging if you have large data sets. And uh, I need to look and try and learn the API for that. Uh, Simon is here, sitting in the back in this, in this really bright colored 
uh, checkered shirt. Simon is a, is a Wikidata expert, and um, one of the, he's our first partner this week. There may be others today, I don't, you know, so we still got options. Um, and he's adding Roar as a property to Wikidata. So what that means is that we can use the Wikidata reconciler that's already built into um, uh, OpenRefine and has existed and, and been uh, evolved over the years to, uh, to reconcile these names. And then we can use, we can just, once we find a, a wiki uh, data ID for some organization, we can say, give us the ROAR for this organization. So that's going to be a huge uh, change. It will also allow us to connect to the existing wiki, uh, uh, Wikipedia pages for those organizations as landing pages for those organizations. So that's another cool thing. That we're, and, you know, uh, we're, Simon's got a, a uh, ambitious schedule for that. We hope to have it working uh, during this month, and it's going to be super cool. Uh, and then also testing and imp implementation with more partners. So we're looking for partners. If they're here, if some of you here are interested in this, we'd love to work with you. Another nice thing about Crossref in this case is it has uh, over 12,000 members. So if you're, if even if you can only convince one percent of them that um, this is interesting, then that's enough to uh, to keep us busy. So <clears throat> I developed some tools just a little while ago for visualizing Crossref metadata, and in the upper uh, right-hand corner of this is the percentage of records in uh, Crossref that have affiliations. On the left is the Korean Society for Plant Biotechnology, <clears throat> and the orange in here is uh, data that's older than two years, and the blue is data that is uh, two years or less. So this, this journal, in this case, in the last two years, has had a huge increase in the number of affiliations in their Crossref metadata. So I can use this analytic at looking at the metadata to identify potential partners who have obviously put in, a, you know, they've made some organizational decisions that have resulted in, in increasing the number of affiliations in their metadata. And so when you're trying to convince them that identifiers for those affiliations might be useful, this is a good target audience. On the right is Hindawi. Probably most of you, many of you know about Hindawi. Yes, no, open publisher. Uh, does uh, 20,000 articles uh, a year, roughly. Some, maybe it's, I think it's 20, no, maybe, yeah, I think it is 20,000. They have about 40,000 uh, uh, resources in Crossref. And you can see they have a long history of populating those, uh, those metadata records with affiliations. So, and they're also interested in open science. And you can see, because uh, all around this circle, the, uh, the lines are close to 100%. They've got a lot of stuff and a lot of affiliations and DOIs. So those are the kinds of groups that I'm looking to, to try and uh, partner in this work. Um, any questions? <clears throat> 